This is the PyMole interface with the command line at the top. We'll load our structure by typing fetch 3FGU, and the structure appears in the structure viewer. The red crosses are water molecules, and for now we want to hide all of the water molecules that are not in the active site. So we'll go up to this object for everything, hide in the H tab, waters. To identify our ligands, we'll first use the display menu to turn on our sequence. If we use this scroll bar to scroll to the right, the ligands are shown after breaks in these one letter amino acid codes that indicate the protein chain here. The four ligands are shown here before the water molecules. To identify a ligand, click on it. It'll light up in the sequence and to deselect, click in the empty space. Let's reposition the structure and zoom in on our ligands. Now we'll select the three ligands within the active site by clicking on them. There's our magnesium, there's the glucose, and here's the ANP. And we'll see they light up up here. Clicking on anything within the structure makes a new selection pop up here. Clicking on more things will add to it, but if we want to preserve the selection, we'll rename it. Using the A tab, rename the selection, and here is where you're renaming it. Delete the letters S-E-L-E, -E, and type ligands. Press Enter, and our object is renamed. We can use this object to make a new selection around it. First, we're going to want to duplicate the selection. With the A tab, duplicate, and here we have a new selection. Since we're going to use this to form the active site, we'll rename it to active. Now this is still selecting the ligand, so we'll use the A tab to select around it. Actions, modify, expand by five angstroms and this will capture the ligands and the residues around it. To show the active site amino acid residues as sticks, use the S Show tab and select Licorice Sticks. And now the sticks are displayed. To deselect, click in the black space and we can see these are all in stick representation now. To show the water molecules that are in the active site within hydrogen bonding distance of the ligands, we can again duplicate the ligands object. Now it says selection two, which we'll rename to active water. Click A, modify, around, and we'll select the atoms within four angstroms. This selects water molecules in addition to the active site residues that are in that range. So we'll modify this further. Actions, modify, and restrict this to solvent. These are the highlighted water molecules within the active site. And to show them in the more typical sphere representation that we show for metal ions and water molecules, we can again use the A tab. Actions, we'll use a preset, ball, and stick. And when we deselect, we can see the red oxygen atoms of the water molecules. To focus on our active site, we can zoom on it using the A tab. It applies a little clipping that makes it easier to see. The clipping is kind of a shadow of things that are further back in the distance of the protein. We can see the magnesium ion already has these dashes indicating a bond to this oxygen, but we need to show the interactions of the ligand with the protein side chains and other water molecules. We can do this by quickly finding polar contacts. Using our ligand selection and the A tab, we're going to find polar contacts to any atoms. And our dashed lines appear and creates a new object over here. 
It's nice to see the side chains of the active site within the context of the whole protein. But also that can obscure our view, this cartoon representation around. So we're going to turn that off. In the 3FGU object, hide the cartoon. And this will just display the active site and all of the ligands. This is still a little difficult to interpret because our ligands are the same color as the protein. So we'll recolor these using the selection ligands. In the C, color tab, we'll color by element and choose cyan with a light blue for carbon. Notice the coloring scheme for the other atoms is all the same where nitrogen is blue, oxygen is red, and that's CPK coloring. Click. And now we have a contrasting color of our ligands to our protein. To identify our interacting amino acids, we can label our active site. Go to Active, click on the L for Label, and then click Residues. And the labels come up for all of the residues of our active site. If we wanted to only show hydrogen bonding residues, for example, we could click on the residues connected by dotted bonds manually. This will create a new object in our name's object panel, and then we could show those separately. For printing and publication, it's often desirable to have a white background. Under the display menu, select background white, and conveniently our labels change to black.